one of the biggest challenges we've got is uh, measuring something that is really uh, intimate and subjective to each person's being is how do I as a physician or I as a friend or a spouse or a parent measure your pain. So right now I can't really technically measure your pain. We have pain measurement scales, but most of them or almost all of them involve you or a patient saying, this is my pain on a scale of zero to 10 with 10 being the worst. Or a child will point to a crying face and they'll say, that's how bad I feel. So we have scales that measure pain, but they really only measure your report of the pain. Well, I think there are certain cultures that right now uh, tend to be much more demonstrative just emotionally in general. Other cultures around the world are much more stoic. They're, they're more stoic in how they uh, uh, reveal lots of things, whether it's emotions or just response to injury. Now, does that training that you get when you're born, are you born genetically? If you're born in a stoic, into a stoic culture, do you have extra strong genes that say this actually doesn't hurt me that much? Or are you just trained from the beginning in your culture to reveal and convey a sense of pain differently than another culture? You would get born into a situation from the beginning where there's lots of emotion. Now, if someone's very emotional and someone's very stoic in one other culture, do they actually have different amounts of pain? And that comes down to the issue of, well, what is pain? It's your perception of an experience that you consider unpleasant, to put it mildly, uh, to terrible, uh, you know, at the extreme. And the body's amazingly biologically built to handle this in lots of different ways. One is that there are suppressor nerves which go back down the spinal cord that try to actually inhibit or muffle the pain. There are triggers which set off our own body's morphine type substances. If people hear about enkephalins and endorphins that let the person keep going if, if there's a, another focus and drive, then the body's brain is stimulated in the nerve cells to produce these internal morphines which directly actually block some of the pain. And then there's just the decision and the willpower to go on in spite of what pain you still actually feel. So the body can neurologically and chemically try to suppress pain. And then there's the rest of our being which can choose to respond to a certain amount of pain in different ways. Now, sometimes pain is just too much. You can break down because of pain, and that's why we have to try to modulate it. How can we measure your pain? And so can we show in the brain with certain new techniques that certain parts of the brain light up if you have a noxious, we call it a noxious stimulus or a, a negative stimulus or pain, such that we can try to find out, you know, somewhat to figure out drugs, can we affect that part of the brain by developing something that might block that? On the other hand, we have to have a little bit of concern about, I think, a test telling us how much pain we are personally experiencing. And I think that gets into the, the tricky balance of, again, the medical world, maybe the insurance world, uh, maybe the legal world trying to decide how much pain you are actually in. And it's an issue. A lot of people claim injury and claim pain, and there's a lot of legal issues around that, a lot of money spent um, to determine how much someone has pain. And so I think uh, it, in a good way, I think the more we can understand about the process of pain and how, it, how we experience it and can we modulate that in some way, whether pharmacologically or surgically or even just psychotherapeutically. Um, I think we all have a little stress about someone trying to tell us, even by a test, how much pain we have. I don't think we mind if someone tells us your sugar's 200 or your blood pressure's a little high at 170 over 80. We can explain it, but we don't argue it. Uh, someone tries to tell you you're not really hurting that much. We, we checked this scan and it just says you're not. That's a little tougher, I think, test for us to accept. Thank you.